Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at another Generation 1 Transformer. This week we've got a Protectobot, something I haven't looked at at all up to this point, and I'm very ashamed of that, as this was a group I've long had complete, and I should have reviewed somebody from them by now. So, this week we're taking a look at the Autobot Air Support Unit, Blades. Blades would be released in 1986, along with the other Protectobots. He would also be available in 1987. He would be discontinued in 1988, and we really did not get a, a replacement for him. As stated earlier, Blades is one of the Protectobots. He was the only one in the group that could fly, so kind of a nice change from the aerial bots that were also released that year. But of course, Blades is also a helicopter, whereas the aerial bots were all airplanes. But still, it was good to see the Autobots starting to get some serious air firepower that was affordable. Because not every one of us was able to get some of the ones released the year prior, like the Dinobot Swoop or even Jetfire. At any rate, let's take a look at this small combiner component and take a look at his articulation. As you can imagine, it is only in the arms. He can rotate his arms almost all the way around. They kind of get in the way of the cockpit behind him. They are fully rotatable. Take out the missile launcher down here and they can go almost all the way back like so, but again the cockpit or the missile launcher gets in the way, but at least the launcher you can do something about. You can't do much with the cockpit. As much as I enjoy the design of blades, the instructions indicate that, in reality, the blades should be separated and pointing up on the back, but they do not do not physically go the way they want them to. So you're left to kind of either leave them hanging back or connect them into the cockpit, but as you can see, they are slightly bent when doing that, so... It's kind of a catch-22 here, folks. There's no really a way to win or lose with it. But at any rate, let's move right along and let's transform blades. We'll start, of course, by removing all the accessories. Starting with the missile launchers and, of course, take his gun. Alright, to transform blades, first thing we're going to do back here is rotate the rotor out to get it out from in that cockpit. You take the cockpit area and fold it up over his head. And then the next thing you're going to do is fold the arms down to the side and push them inward until they lock into place. And then now, push his legs up against the body and then the tail pieces here at the side you just pull them out like so and fold them back connect them together and of course rotate the upper blade so that it stands out as one long piece how well it does that depends on how much play wear your toy has suffered but here's Blades in his alternate mode. His alternate mode, of course, is the Bell UH-1V Iroquois Helicopter. The Iroquois helicopter was one that was conceived in 1952 when the Army realized it needed a more versatile helicopter for general use and especially for medevac. Of course, 
The Iroquois, or the Huey as it was also known as, would see plenty of action in the Vietnam War. So many movies that cover the Vietnam War, such as The Green Berets, Platoon, and Apocalypse Now heavily feature this helicopter. The helicopter, of course, would make a brief appearance in the James Bond film Diamonds Are Forever as part of the fleet that attacks Blofeld's oil rig. And more recently, the Iroquois would also appear in the movie Kong Skull Island. So, chances are you've seen one of these in action. If you haven't, you likely have seen one in one of your military museums. But of course, you can also, for blades here, you can attach the rocket launchers. He wouldn't care for them, and we'll explain why a little later, but you can attach the rocket launchers onto him for some added firepower. And kind of, yeah, that does make him look a little more like a versatile war machine, doesn't it? Even though he's more colored for civilian life, I kind of like it. They're a little oversized, but... They kind of get the point across. You don't want to mess with him. Of course, up here you got the, the rotor blade does rotate. How well it does, how well it stays in the completely straight position, kind of depends on play wear, as you can imagine. You fold them up all the time for play, or even some of us do it for storage. And of course, you got the little tiny tail rotor. You Always want to check that out, folks, because you can imagine this is a very thin piece of plastic. And he just fell on the floor. Darn butterfingers. You always want to check that to make sure it's not damaged or broken, since it's a pain in the neck to replace it. Biggest thing I don't understand is the fact that he's got, as you probably had noticed for a while, Got them little dinky plastic wheels on the bottom. I mean, I guess he can roll then. But, they really don't have any traction, so... He doesn't roll too good. Well, maybe he does, just a little bit. But, I think we're all more... Just play with it like a normal helicopter and... Do a normal landing like that. Now let's take a look at Blades' accessories. And the biggest thing to remember is that these are not going to look exactly like they're shown in the instructions. I'm going to start here with this. This is his gun. It's known as a photon pistol. A photon pistol predominantly shoots blinding bursts of light. So it's kind of a, almost a non-violent weapon. Looks the same on the other side, but as you'll notice, the knob that connects to it points out only to the one side, so he can only properly hold it in his right hand. And then, of course, he has two of these missile launchers. This is the cannon that goes on the right side. Then, of course, conversely, this is the one that goes on the left side. Of course, as you can also tell, these are also in white plastic, so they are a pain to find in this in as good a shape as you're seeing here, folks. These these are originals. These are from my childhood. You can see how well I took care of these took care of these guns of his. Mainly due to the fact that very seldom did I have him holding his guns. I don't know why. I was more interested in the toy than a lot of the accessories. I kinda like the bigger guns on the bigger robots more, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, finding some that are as pristine white as those are will be a challenge. Now, of course, as usual at this point, we will be showing off his card backer. 
And this would be one of the later versions of the card backer from 1986. As it had here advertised the Iron On Patch prize that would be hidden in amongst here. There would be a patch that your parents could iron onto a t-shirt or as my parents did to a book bag. That would feature a Transformer character or you would win a prize. I don't remember exactly what you would have won, but I don't think it really matters. Anyway, we got some pretty good artwork of Blades here. And see here by the generic price tag, he sold for about five bucks. Around here to the back side. And up here in the corner, we have the rules for the for the contest they were doing. His robot point, he was worth half a point. And then you get the advertising bar up here to show all of his teammates. And their combined form of Defensor. And now we'll start to, trans start to show off his instructions. You can see on the picture here, they show the blades are kept separated, but that's physically impossible to do with the way the toy is designed. And show here how to, after they show all the stuff he comes with, here's how to mount the missile launchers on him. And then, of course, how to transform him into the robot. And then down here we get the big discrepancies, because again, they want you to rotate the blades to be like that, but with the way the cockpit folds against there, that's physically impossible to do without breaking the toy. And they also show here that the photon pistol connects on the top of his fist. Unfortunately, Blades does not have a hole at the top of his fist. He has a hole at the side of his fist. So, that's why I stated earlier, he can only hold the gun properly in his right hand. If it's in his left hand, he's holding it upside down. Thus making it harder to aim. Now, of course, that's how you want to display it. Who am I to judge? And then, of course, you got the stickers here. And lastly, the directions on how to use the rub sign. And collect your robot points. And then, of course, we got the barcode over here, and all the way over here is the tech spec. We got a nice picture of blades that matches the one on the front of the package. It's done up in red to show that he's an Autobot. It lists him as a Protectobot. It gives his name as Blades, and it lists his function as Air Support. Air support is basically what it sounds. You're getting aid from the air, usually in the form of the heavier weaponry that's on the helicopter to attack ground troops and light armor. Blades' motto is, War is a dirty game, and I'm a dirty player. Basically a street fighter. Seriously? Is he going to start doing a Hadouken or... Any of those other moves? Prefers using rotor blades for slashing Decepticons rather than for flying. Considers long-range air attacks unsporting. Cowardly. Maximum speed 400 miles per hour. Range 1200 miles. Twin launchers fire, quote, smart, unquote, rockets that seek targets based on encoded computer images. Uses photon pistol. Combines with fellow Protectobots to form Defensor. So you get the image, you get the impression here that Blades more prefers getting up close to his enemies than shooting at them from a distance. Which kind of put him at odds, which kind of puts him at odds with some of the other Protectobots. As he's more willing to go and destroy than defend. At any rate, let's put the decoder over the grid and see what it gives for his stats. It puts his strength at 8, his intelligence is 7, his speed is also 7, his endurance is 5, his rank is also 5, his courage is 9, 
His firepower and his skill are seven. So Blades is a pretty competent warrior and has some good stats to match. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of Blades? Blades was always one of my favorite toys growing up as a kid. So yeah, this, this part here is going to be a little bit biased on that. But I really do think that he is a great toy. As a helicopter, he was certainly a different and worthy addition to the Autobots, as they didn't have a helicopter in their ranks yet. In fact, for most kids, if they couldn't afford getting a lot of the big airplanes or any of the big Transformer toys, the only one they'd have that was probably a flyer was Power Glide. And so, Blades would be a good companion to him, as they both would have a similar means of attack. They're meant to destroy ground targets. So, that gave the ever-popular Power Glide somebody to hang around with. But also, when you look into it, Blades is also a character that specializes more in wanting to get in and up close and personal with the Decepticons. So he's a bit more vicious than what normally would be allowed by most toys back then. So he's a bit of a controversial character for being more preferring to eviscerate his opponents than shoot them. But that just helps add to more of his charm. Instead of basically being a street fighter, he almost would probably be more at home in Mortal Kombat. Imagine him doing a fatality on a character by running those rotor blades through him. Oh, the gruesome imagine imagery we can come up with with that. I apologize to anybody who has young children watching this. But at any rate, I do think Blades is a top tier character. Which is hard to give to a lot of the smaller toys, but I certainly think he deserves it. He certainly has an alternate mode and a function that was very crucial for the Autobots to have. And with him coming out the same year that the Decepticons gained the Combaticons, he certainly would have plenty of opportunities to show off his worth. So definitely, he is a top tier toy, folks. And that concludes my review of the Generation 1 Autobot Air Support Unit Blades. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already joined up with us. Please also consider leaving a like and share your thoughts in the comments section down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.